Hello, my name is Rajiv Suri. I'm the CEO of Inmarsat, a global satellite communications company. These are my biggest lessons. My first lesson is to ask a lot of questions. I like to ask a lot of searching questions so that you can get to the bottom of the answer and sort of conceptualize the idea. I'll give you an example. When I started in my current company about a year ago, uh, the first thing I did was to meet with all uh, 140 senior leaders in a one-to-one -one setting. So I can ask questions about the culture, about the technology, about where we're going, about what they think we should change. I also did a survey of three very simple questions with all employees. I asked them, what do you want me to absolutely retain? What do you want me to change? And what do you think is working well uh, at the company? And uh, then I'm recalling my time uh, when I was the first time CEO back in 2009. I was CEO of Nokia Siemens Networks. And it was very clear that I wanted to be a customer-centric company. So the first thing I did was to go out and meet uh, 100 customers in 100 days face-to-face uh, -face, so I could ask them what's working and what we must change. Stay humble and grounded. Humility is a personal trait. Uh, I like to be down to earth. It's just the way I am. But I also think it's great if, if that can translate into your company values in, in some way, shape, or form. So for me, in my previous company, we had that illustrated through respect and openness. Uh, the thing is, when, when the leadership team is, is grounded, is down to earth, and displays humility, it says to people that we have an open door. You know, we are willing to listen and learn from employees, from the best ideas in the company. It says that uh, bad news can travel faster than good news, and you're okay with that. It says that you accept criticism. Uh, and so I, I love the idea of, of uh, you know, companies being humble. And when bad news travel faster than good news, it, it does mean that you, know, you rarely are blindsided and you, you have no risk of company arrogance. I recall when I became CEO of Nokia in 2014, the first thing we uh, got to work with, with uh, the top 45 people was you know, our values, because I think values are timeless. You know, they, are, they, they last forever. Culture can change with your business context, but values are timeless. And so we got to work on, on the values. And after we worked with our top 45 people, we, we did a culture jam for, for two days to get you know, all 100,000 people enlisted in, in co-creating the values. And it was a you know, super energetic process, but it also set us up for a period of major change. My third lesson is to build a star team, not a team of stars, and ensure that that team is better than you in every respect and every field because that's how you, you know, create uh, greatness uh, in, in a company. Uh, back uh, when we were trying to revive Nokia through the revival of Nokia's infrastructure business, our profit was zero, our revenues were declining 21%, but we had a team that was brought together and, and really lived that shared goal of success, to revive the company and to bring it back to its you know, days of glory. And we took that annual profit that we had at time in 2009 of zero, to well more than two billion some years later. And during that special phase of you know, 2010 to 2012, that team was just driven by that one shared goal. And we created that star team. And, and here, when I've joined uh, in my current role about a year ago, uh, I brought in about a third of the team from outside. Uh, the rest of the team uh, had a lot of deep space sector knowledge. And we've retained that, that part of the team. But we brought in uh, people from the outside where we needed the greatest change. So marrying the outside in perspectives with that deep space sector knowledge is now allowing us to create that dream team. And the task here in this company is not quite a turnaround or a revival, but it is about doing great new things. And so in just eight months, we've been able to announce that we are combining with uh, you know, a fast growing uh, company so that we can create um, a number one industry leader. And it's also allowed us to launch uh, a few things right at the outset in just under six months uh, because we were able to gel well as a team. My fourth lesson is to choose speed over perfection. You rarely go wrong with speed. The companies have a lot of institutional knowledge and there's a lot of deep instinct there. Um, leaders rarely tap into that gut instinct. But you marry that analysis with gut instinct and you get to the right speedy decision making. So for me, Speed is a real virtue that's you know, underestimated in companies. And so 
uh, when I became CEO here uh, a year ago, the first thing we got to work on was a future back strategy. So we looked at, okay, what kind of technologies do we need you know, 10 years from now? And what kind of company do we want to be 10 years from now? And so play back from that point and say, what are the things that we need to do now to enable that future? And so we launched Orchestra. Orchestra is the first of its kind global mobility communications network, which combines uh, low Earth orbit solutions uh, and with high Earth orbit solutions as well as 5G from the terrestrial side and our geostationary orbit satellites. Uh, this has not been imagined before in the industry. So we did that fairly quickly. We combined that with you know, some analysis and, and some deep uh, gut feel. And uh, we surprised all our competitors and we delighted most of our customers. Uh, on the other side, there was another decision uh, which was waiting to happen for a long time. It's called Elera. And uh, Elera is a, an IoT pivot, an industrial IoT, uh, industrial Internet of Things pivot that we uh, chose to, to drive by way of a new technology. And this was a decision uh, waiting to happen for, for, in fact, a number of years at, at the company because people were looking for the perfect business case. And like I said, you won't find uh, a perfect business case sometimes, and an endless debate has to stop. And so we made a decision, we move forward, and already some months later, we're enjoying the fruits of, of both these decisions. My final lesson is to experiment and fail fast. And that says to your people that you're willing to take risks, you're willing to incubate new businesses, uh, you're willing to make mistakes and learn from those mistakes, but also says that you're willing to learn uh, because companies don't often institutionalize failures and, and learn from those things. So you want to experiment, you want to create an experimentation culture, but also as individuals, you want to learn, learn and learn. You want to learn beyond your, your, your job. And I've always chosen all of my roles based on learning first. And other things came later because learning is what drives me uh, to put in my best. And so I was 25 years at Nokia. Uh, I changed some 10 jobs. I've done strategy jobs, I've done technology leadership roles, I've done product management, I've done account management, I've uh, led a large region, uh, culminated in me uh, leading the largest business unit in which I had no background, services business unit, and, and we created that to become the fastest business unit in the company, and, and then I became the CEO of the company later uh, as well. And so, uh, not only that, I also moved a number of locations. I think I lived in some eight countries during, during that time. So, moving locations, changing bosses, and uh, changing roles just becomes very exciting. So, my philosophy has always been, if you stop learning, you're in a comfort zone, time to do something different. And I brought that here as well to my current company, and we're trying to take more risk and we're trying to create uh, experimentation. And so why do I choose the current company? Because it does something completely different from the company I came from.